I'm really hoping that this doesn't end up being an issue, but we're at our hotel in, it's a Pigeon Forge or to address um, River Bend Inn. And there's a huge sign right there and it says no pets. Now, I always call hotels ahead of time to try to make sure that they are educated so I don't have issues, but we've literally been locked out of a hotel room before because I had a service animal and we had to call the cops. It was a whole thing. I'll link that video in the description if this video ends up being a thing. Um, the person I talked to on the phone earlier left at 2 and it is 4.54 now. And so, but when I called, I was like, okay, you know, I just try to make sure ahead of time that I'm not going to have any, you know, access issues. So, um, would you mind telling me what your service animal policy is? I have a cardiac alert service animal. And, um, he proceeded to say, you know, oh, well, as long as you have like your certificate so we can make a copy of it. And I'm like, what certificate? And I just kind of waited and he was just like, uh, and I'm like, in the U.S., you know, there's legally no, like, paperwork or certificates. And then he was saying something about he was looking at their laws because apparently they have a print off of the laws. I don't know if they're accurate. And I was reading him, um, the ADA law card and I told him that. And, um, he was explaining what he could and couldn't ask. And so, um, it ended up being fine with him after speaking on the phone, but he said the owner yeah. was going to be here when we got here. And I'm just hoping yeah. that the owner is educated and doesn't ask us for a certificate or ID yeah. or paperwork. Um, the room has already been paid for because of who we spoke to earlier. I hate hotels. I hate doing this. Like this is so such anxiety. If you're thinking about a service animal, this is anxiety. Okay. <laughs> Just saying. Um, but I've got Maya's vaccination records. Um, we actually did manage to stop by the vet and get a print off yeah. of her, um, vaccines. Um, so I do have those and I don't mind sharing those to show that my dog is fully vaccinated. I don't mind doing that at all, but I don't know. We'll see. Um, we'll see how this goes. I'm waiting on Austin to get, I guess, like the trolleys so that we can load up everything on it. And then I'm going to let Maya go pee. And then I guess we're going to go up to the room. So... We'll see, I think he's already signed in or checked in and I think he may have a key. We usually kind of all go in together at the same time. And um, I don't know, we'll see um, how this goes. I've got such bad anxiety right now. I shouldn't have to feel this way and it's sad that I do, but I really, really pray that we walk in and it's just smooth like butter. <laughs> um, We'll find out, I guess. Oh, here comes the husband. The suitcases are oh. off. Oops, you got it?
Oh, wait. Okay. Wait. I'm not worried about it. It's okay. I mean, it's no different than segregation, which is definitely illegal, but, Honey, but we're not taking any pets, period. she's not a pet. Sense. She's medical equipment. I understand, but we still have to follow the rules. But I don't understand what the, the rules. Because I, we have the food here. There's another and restaurant. she goes through buffets. She goes into restaurants because she's a task train service animal. She's medical equipment. Yeah, Her, the, the law, you, she goes into hospitals. She was there when I was, when I gave birth. She was there. If she can walk through those places, there's no reason she can't walk through the hotel. Anywhere so that is public so access. She'll be having breakfast with us in the morning. Right? We'll be in there in the breakfast room and she'll be laying on the floor like she's laying right now. But Okay, well then um, I suggest looking up the ADA laws a little more and looking specifically into the hotel. Um, while while we're gone, um, I can help you. You know, like I've been having to deal with this. Don't get me wrong, I love animals. Yeah, no, and I understand. I understand that you're trying to keep you know your other guests and things, but it's the same as like public access. Somebody can't deny us access just because they're scared of dogs or another customer complains. We can't be denied because of that. Whether because I, I use a wheelchair as well. And so when I use my wheelchair, if I was to come in with my wheelchair, you wouldn't say, oh, well, with your wheelchair, don't come through this entrance, go through that entrance. The wheelchair is medical equipment. You can yeah, okay. The wheelchair is medical equipment. Under federal law and- You can walk and you have a wheelchair as well? Yes. It's heart. Do you have like a paperwork? What do I need to prove it for? Do you have like any documents? I mean, personally, yes. I guess because I use a wheelchair and I could walk. I think. Well, those paperwork and documents, like if somebody hands you a service dog ID or certificate, those are scams. Those are only sold on scam websites. So unless the dog is behaving, if you have somebody hand you an ID and says, oh, this is my service dog ID, but their dog is jumping around, it's not a trans service dog. And so it's just in the U.S., but anywhere that allows public accommodation, if everyone else is generally allowed to use this entrance, then legally we would generally be allowed to use the entrance. Now, we may use the other entrance. We may use this. The it's handi actually easier to Well, the handicapped parking is right there too, though, and that's where I'm parked. So, um, well, you can park just right there, so you can follow the long distance. Uh, we're booked. 
Oh, no, I mean, it's it's fine. I usually park in my handicapped spot anyway. If somebody does say anything about it, we'll just we'll just call them and ask them questions. Just call them girls. Yeah, we understand. Like, I just said this out loud, and I felt like, you know what? Let me just pick the camera up. Mommy. We got in just fine. No issues going in, but we get everything in the room, and we go to leave so we can go up to the island um, and, and go do that for a few hours. And as we're walking out, you can't use this entrance because of your dog. Yes, I can. Like, if you but tell me, better. if you tell me not to use this entrance because of my dog, my entire family will go down and use the other entrance because it is closer to our room. My whole family will go down and use that entrance, except for me. I will come back through the entrance you just told me not to walk through just to spite you. Just because no. you can't do that. Um, and because she's Sarah's dog calls. Right, you know? <laughs> so, but then I'm just like, for example, if I came through with my wheelchair, you wouldn't tell me to use the other entrance because of my wheelchair. She's met a, my, my dog's medical equipment too. You're, what was it? You, lady, you're standing was, and you, you can use ask, a wheelchair. Yeah, can yeah. you prove can it? Can you prove it? And, and that's when I always looked at her and I was like, wait, no. what did you say? Like, like, where are you going with us? I'm sitting there, I'm like, ah. why would I need to? Can you prove that you're a hotel can you receptionist? Prove it? Can you prove it? Per and receptionist? that's why I was just like, personally, oh. yes. Like I can personally for myself prove that I have my doctor's note and I actually have it with me. But no way in hell am I gonna show you. Yeah, baby, I'll open that up. But yeah, <laughs> River Bend Inn. Today is Saturday, March 5th at 5.45 p.m. That's who's working. Well, uh, the parking lot is like, packed full. I was told to park here because there's nowhere else to park. It's a uh, different person than when we left. So see if there's any issues or not walking in. Sure. I wonder if she needs to use bathroom real quick. I'll come back out with her. That's fine. That's my car luxury. I think they'll all look sore and tired. Hey, let's go. All right, last overview of our room. Nothing's been destroyed. Right. Yeah, I got the cards. Come here, baby. Because other people have already left. Um, I guess some rooms are being cleaned and some rooms aren't. Oh, 
if I don't fall over. Sorry, Liam, I just stepped on your foot. My sits. Hang on, Liam. My weight. Um. I need somebody to talk to about yesterday. My right, sits. They're coming. No, but the keys are right here. Is she the one that has like the really short hair? Or does she have longer hair? She probably has longer hair. That's okay. I had um, issues last night. Okay. And so um, I guess it's, I'll just make sure. I, I've reported it to the Tennessee Disability Coalition, but um, it was, I had issues from being told I couldn't walk through the main entryway because of her. And I'm just like, we were parked in handicapped parking and I tried to explain and educate, you know, the laws there. And then I, when I use the comparison that um, I use a wheelchair on occasion, because um, I think so sometimes it's safer for me to use a wheelchair. Um, I was asked if I ha if I basically could prove it and if I had documents for my wheelchair and just, it just wasn't very, it didn't make me feel very good. So, okay, thank you. the videos everywhere. <laughs> Never been in. They just bored. Hi guys. So I'm going to try to touch base on a couple of things that keep showing up in the comments on that video. I keep getting a lot of questions. Is an emotional support dog or is my dog a true service dog? My dog is 100% absolutely trained. She has gone through two years of training and she had been trained since she was 10 weeks old. She's also trained to do cardiac alerts for my heart among many other things. I have a condition called dysautonomia, which is autonomic nervous system dysfunction. My brain sends all the wrong signals to my body and it can directly affect my heart and cause extreme tachycardia, low blood pressure, and it can make me faint. The type of dysautonomia I have is referred to as POTS, which is postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. I just had surgery end of last year to have a port placed due to the severity of my dysautonomia. Maya here is very well trained. You guys can very easily go through and look through my account and see videos of her. Many people probably won't know what these are, but this is actually certificates of training that my dog has gone through. Now, service dogs in the U.S. can be owner trained, which my dog is owner trained, but the only thing with owner training is that the dog still have to meet the exact same standards as a program dog. So we have our certificates over here of the CGCs that we've gone through, just as extra paperwork and backup to prove that she has had training. I've also been on YouTube for about five years. This is what I do. I advocate for service animals and for disabilities. I've seen comments about, oh, well, they just asked you to use another door. Okay, off of if I thought it was rude or I just didn't like it, the handicapped parking was over here. That was the only available parking the entire time we were there was over here. 
Instead of going through the main entryway to walk through our door, they would want us to walk all the way from the handicap parking up here, all the way down through to another side door and then to our room. That was too much. I can't physically do that much. I was already doing a lot. We were already in vacation. I was already pushing my body to its limits. All the extra was too much for me. And I shouldn't have to. That's, I just, I shouldn't have to. Now, had they asked me for my dog's vaccination records, I would have been more than happy to show that. Because that's proving that my dog is vaccinated. And under federal laws and state laws, she should be vaccinated. And they can request to see her vaccination records. And I had those on me. That's fine. Requesting documentation for my disabilities to prove it? And not so much. On another note, my dog was very obviously well-trained. Not to mention, she was in a full mobility harness. Well, uh, the parking lot is like packed full. I was told to park here because there's nowhere else to park. It's a uh, different person than when we left, so. My first, I wonder if she needs to use that thing real quick. I'll come back out with her. That's fine. Get my car luxury. Come on, ma'am. So it's kind of been brought to my attention by the hotel manager, owner, whatever she is, that she will give us or has offered us a refund if I remove the video off of TikTok. So instead of, I'm going to offer you a refund because this was wrong, it's, I'll give you a refund if you remove the video. So last night she called us while we were driving and I told her, I said, I am still driving home. Um, mind you, it was past 11 o'clock. Um, I was like, I am still driving home. Um, can you, you know, call me at a different time? Uh, I don't really have time to talk here. You know, I'm sorry that people are, you know, calling you, threatening you. That is not okay. But what your employee did to me was not okay either. It was very rude, not to mention illegal. She told me that she had told the employee before and the employee supposedly already knew, but then she had talked to her again, um, is what she told me. Um, you know, she apologized and kept on about how service animals were allowed, but honestly, the owner or manager, she's not very well educated herself. So I'm definitely not going to remove this video when the main management within the hotel needs better education. Um, she kept telling me, oh, well, we can't ask anything. We can't ask anything, you know. And I'm just like, no, you can. And then I explained, tried to explain the laws to her to where she knew what her legal rights were, what you can ask of regarding a service animal, what you are not legally allowed to do, and when can you legally remove a service animal from your facility. She wasn't really hearing any of that. But I also don't really like being bribed. I'll give you a refund, $115, um, if you remove your video because my employees messed up, even though I've apparently already told this employee once before, but they didn't again. Sorry. Now, not once did I tell her that I would remove the video. Um, I just said, oh, well, you know, that's nice. So not long goes by and uh, like an hour later, I'm still driving. We haven't even gotten home yet. She calls again. And at that point, like we're almost home and I'm just like, Okay, you know, we'll try to talk later. She didn't leave a voicemail. All I am getting right now is that she just wants the video removed and she will give me $115 to remove the video. I really don't want to be bribed. Obviously, this is going to be an incurrent type of issue because you said your employee was already educated and um, we still had an issue and you are not yourself educated um and the entire business needs to go through better education so no i'm not going to be removing this video and i have contacted the tennessee disability coalition people keep asking me why didn't this get talked about before we made our reservation 
And we actually called the hotel and discussed their service animal policy and such and talked on the phone before we even made the reservation to make sure there wasn't going to be an issue. Then we get there. My husband walks on in to check us in. And from my knowledge, uh, I think she went to ask something and my husband was just like, yeah, you know, it is a service animal. I don't remember the whole conversation. I wasn't in there for that. She was completely fine with it. But at the time, she had not seen me. So we all get out. We get all of our luggage. We walk through and we actually walk through and go to our room. At which point, she was able to have full view of myself, who looks normal and healthy. We get to our room. We unpack. We get the kids. We go to walk out of the room to leave go do things with the kids and enjoy our vacation and that's when we get stopped I truly believe this was based off of how I looked and the additional comments of you walk but you need a wheelchair that only solidified that that my thinking was true this was definitely discrimination based off of how I look I was definitely judged off of appearance and it was left at that in that person's mind but I always call ahead to check with hotels to make sure that they are educated before we go because we've had an access issue in Florida years ago where we were actually locked out of our hotel room even though again it was in the reservation we had checked in it was the next day we had left We come back and we had been locked out of our room because of my service dog. My now retired service dog. And I had to call the cops and the cops had to come up there. And it was a whole thing. We got access back to our room, but it was still a whole thing. That's on video on my YouTube channel too, by the way. If you want to see that. Hotel denies access. Okay, so anyway, um, yeah, it's definitely, I definitely do believe that this individual does absolutely need to be fired. And what's killing me the most is that the hotel will not stop calling the manager slash owner, whatever you want to call her. The only thing she is focused on is me removing the video. She said that she would give us a refund if we removed the video. I'm not going to remove this video. No, my dog is definitely 100% a task trained service animal that went through two years of training. And... My doctor is 100% qualified to give me a note stating that because of my disabilities that I do require the assistance of a service animal. My doctor did not designate my dog specifically as a service animal, no. My doctor specifically said I needed a service animal. It was then up to me to get the service animal. Per the law, I had two options. I could go through a program or I could owner train. If I owner trained, my dog still had to meet the same exact standards as a program trained dog. This is my second service dog. My first service dog, he is now retired. Service animals are trained, not designated. And you absolutely need your doctor To sign off and say that you require a service animal, especially if you're going to go through an organization because organizations, programs that train service animals require medical references from your doctor stating that your disabilities require a service animal. Why do I know that? Because with my service dog now... We are still going through a program to have an extra test that is specifically for service animals to have a test done to, again, just add extra paperwork in my pocket if we ever end up in court that I can prove that she has been trained to the standards of a service animal. Since I want to do that, I had to obviously pay the program for the test, but I'm also having to go through the program as if I was applying for a dog through their program before we can do that test. So I'm having to get all of my medical references together from my doctor to submit to the program just so that they can evaluate and put me and my dog through some tests to say, yes, you pass. This test isn't necessary. It's a public access test. It's just literally extra something, extra signs saying that, yes, her dog is trained to these standards. 
I don't legally have to have it, but I want it because if we ever end up in a situation in court or some other legal matter, having more proof of her training and things that she has completed, whether it's from programs or other type of uh, titles like CGCs and things like that, that would only help our case. You definitely don't know what you're talking about and might need to go do some more research.